Okay, here we have question number five from practice paper C. Uh, show that 10 squared theta minus 7 cosine theta plus 2 over 3 plus 2 cosine theta is equal to 4 minus 5 cosine theta. It's equivalent to, so it's actually three equal signs. And then copy, we didn't come out very well when I printed it across. Anyway, so we've got to show that this becomes that. So this is the left-hand side and this is the right-hand side. And we've got to prove that this becomes that. Now, of course, it's easier to go this way than to go that way. All right. So let's take the original, which is 10 sine squared theta minus 7 cosine theta plus 2 over 3 plus 2 cosine theta. And let's see how we can manipulate this so it becomes that. Now, in the uh, what we see here, there's cosine theta. So... It seems sensible for me to change the sine squared theta into 1 minus cosine squared theta. Remember, very important identity is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. That should be engraved into your brain. So if that's the case, then sine squared theta can be replaced by 1 minus cosine squared theta. If you just rearrange that, you get 1 minus cosine squared theta. So we can replace that sine squared theta. So you're going to have 10 times, you're going to have 1 minus cosine squared theta minus 7 cosine theta plus 2 over 3 plus 2 cosine theta. Try and be as neat as possible. All right, now let's carry on. Now that can expand. You have 10. What's happened to my pen? Oh, there it is. Oh, I'm starting to lag here. Okay, you have 10 uh, minus 10 cosine squared theta minus 7 cosine theta plus 2 over 3 plus 2 cosine theta. So I'm going to rewrite this actually because I can see what's happening. I can kind of think about what's happening. I'm going to rewrite this as 2 cosine theta plus in fact, I can leave it at that because I see, yeah, I see, I see something happening. So 3 plus 2 cosine theta. Now, I, I think I've, I've spotted what's going on here. So you can now have 10 plus 2, which is 12. And I'll write it in this way, minus 7 cosine theta minus 10 cosine squared theta divided by... 3 plus 2 cosine theta. Now, I have a sneaky suspicion that this can be factorized, okay, and you'll end up with two factors. One of them will be 3 plus 2 cosine theta, and the other one will be this, and they'll cancel out. Let me see if that works, because you have a quadratic there. So let's see. Um, let me use my window method and see if it works. Okay. So my window method would say you're going to have um, 12 here and minus 10. Let me just call it x squared for now. So I've, I've just said let x equals cosine theta just to make my less right to do. Okay, so that's, um, and you're going to have minus, so two numbers multiplied to give you minus 120 x squared, and they add to give you minus 7. Okay, let's think of all the ways of getting 120, um, difference of 7. 120 divided by uh, 20, no, that's not right, that's 6 and 20, no. 120 divided by, oops, what am I doing? 120 divided by 15 8 8 times 15 okay good that was a good guess so we know that 8 times 15 is 120 and the difference between 8 and 15 is minus 7 so minus 15x minus 15x and plus 8x okay so take out the factor from these two that's 3 take out the factor from these two that's going to be 4 okay and 4 times plus 2x is 8x and 3 times minus 5x is minus 15x and minus 5 times 2 is minus yeah okay so we end up with getting this so instead of x i'm going to write cosine theta so i've got 
3 plus 2 cosine theta, which I, as I suspected, 3 plus 2 cosine theta. Okay, I'm starting to lag here. And 4 minus 5 cosine theta, cosine theta, over, let's get rid of this. over 3 plus 2 cosine theta. 2 cosine theta. And what happens here? They cancel out and you're left with 4 minus 5 cosine theta as we had to show. Voila. Okay, good. So that's that question done. I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay, so for part B of this question, it says, hence or otherwise, solve for x between 0 and 360. Um, the equation 10 sine x squared minus 7 cosine x plus 2 over 3 plus 2 cosine x equals 4 plus 3 sine x. Now, hence means using what we did on the other page, okay, and for part A, which is here. That's the result we proved in part A. Okay, so basically all I can do, all I have to do is replace all of this with 4 minus 5 cosine theta. That's using hence. That's the easier way of doing it, obviously. So we have 4 minus 5 cosine theta is equal to 4 plus 3 sine theta. Okay? So I've just replaced... Uh, in fact, we're solving this equation. This equation is in x sine theta. So I can just write x instead of theta here because our equation here is in x. So I'll write in x. Okay, so now... Um, how do I solve this? Well, we can see something interesting happening. The fours will disappear, won't they? Okay, when I try to um, bring them together, they'll disappear. So if I take four from both sides, if I take four from this side and this side, I'll end up with minus five cosine x equals three sine x. Okay, and I can make this into tan x by dividing by cosine x. If I divide both sides by cosine x, this becomes tan x and these cancel out, so you're left with 3 times tan x equals minus 5. Just wrote it the other way around. Okay, and so that means tan x is equal to negative 5 over 3. So x is equal to inverse tan of minus 5 over 3. So we can see that we need to get the solutions between 0 and 360. Okay, so there's obviously going to be two solutions, so let's see what they're going to be. So the first solution is found by a calculator. So inverse tan, I'm in degree mode, that's good, of negative 5 over 3. What am I doing there? Of negative 5 <coughs> over 3. That gives me negative 59.036. So x, x equals minus 59.036 dot dot dot. Yep, and with the tan, this is not in our range. The first solution is not in our range, okay? It's basically the angle given that's the principle, which is going to be over there, where the tan is neg negative in, um, in this, uh, let's see, A, S, T, C. So t a tan is negative in these two. So that's the solution that the calculator gave us. So basically for tan, although this is not a solution that we're going to be, um, so one of our solutions, we're going to use it to generate the other solutions. So for tan, it's really easy. It's just, you just add 180 and subtract 180 to and from these angles to get all the other angles that share the same tan ratio. So for this, we've got to add 180. Okay, and that gives me 120.963, 120.963, 120.963, and then I can add 180 again. I've got a limit of 360. Whoops. Answer plus 180. Excuse me, 300.963, of course. 300.963 dot dot dot. Okay, I haven't rounded it. I've just written some of the numbers on it. Okay, and of course, if I add another 180, it's going to be out of the range. So our two solutions are going to be those two rounded to... Okay, 
doesn't say anything, so it should be one decimal place. That's the general convention. Angles to one decimal place. That's going to be 120, um, 1 1.0, because that'll be 120.9. That 9 will cause that to become 10. So that'll become 120.0, and that'll be 301.0. And, and these are the two solutions rounded to one decimal place for this question. And there we have it.